Hello, everyone. Welcome to Keeneland at Home presented by Central Bank. I'm your host, Christina Blacker. We want to let you know that we are so happy that you're joining us for this very special five days of summer racing. We missed you this spring. We are going to miss seeing your smiling, cheering faces out there at the racetrack, but we know that you will be able to enjoy the world-class racing experience from Keeneland from your home. I have to say that the support and participation from the horsemen, from the jockeys, the trainers has been overwhelming from everyone at Keeneland. We thank you for participating and being a part of this one this year. We do hope that you will also share your experience via all of your social media channels for Keeneland at Home. Please use our hashtag Keeneland at Home if you're watching and you want to let your friends at home know that they can also enjoy the races with us. Uh, some fantastic racing coming up for the remainder of the program today and all the way through the rest of the week. And all the stakes races that you're used to seeing will be there. The Toyota Bluegrass, the Central Bank Ashland, the Transylvania, the Jenny Wiley, the Elkhorn, and much, much more. 10 stakes races, millions of dollars on the line over the next several days of racing. Let's take a look at what's coming up on the show for today. So our friends at Maker's Mark, they are going to send us a little tutorial with how to make their signature drink of the day. The Keeneland Breeze is on tap for this afternoon. We are going to get some expert analysis from the Uber capper himself. Ellis Starr will join me on the program in just a little while. If you are new to handicapping, we have a bedology lesson for you today. We'll teach you how to make an across the board wager. That is a win place and show wager. And we'll also have an exciting interview with Katie LaMonica. She's the charities director of Godolphin USA, and they are launching their Thoroughbred Industry Employee Awards process right here today. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the program. Each and every day, we are going to ask a local musician to send us their rendition of the call to post. Today from Greenville, Kentucky, Jason, Grin uh, excuse me, it's Grayson Jenkins joins us with his rendition of the call to post. Take a listen. You can visit GraysonJenkins.com for more of his musical stylings. All right, as promised, it is time to get to our signature cocktail of the day. If you think about Kentucky, you think about horses, you think about basketball, and you think about bourbon. So our friends at Maker's Mark have sent along this tutorial with how to make the Keeneland Breeze for your Wednesday afternoon. Thomas Bolton joins us now. Hey, everybody. My name is Thomas Bolton. I'm the distillery diplomat for Maker's Mark. And today, we're going to make our favorite trackside cocktail, the Keeneland Breeze. Now, what's great about this cocktail is that you're building it straight into the glass. So you're going to start with one and a half parts Maker's Mark, that beautiful classic redhead. All right. A half part of triple sec. And then you're going to float it with ginger ale. Now, I like to use ale eight. Stay keeping it local in Kentucky. You're going to give it a squeeze of an orange in there, get some orange juice. Give it a quick little stir to mix everything together. And then a nice little orange slice as your garnish. Cheers. Enjoy. Have a great day. True story, one of my first uh, bourbon drinks was right there at Keeneland. I'm a California girl, so we aren't always drinking bourbon out here, but bourbon and ale late was one of my first and absolutely loved it. So the Keeneland Breeze is definitely a drink that I will be enjoying as I watch the races for the Wednesday program at Keeneland. Full nine race card there today. And so we're going to move ahead in our program. And if you are playing the races, you're going to need a little bit of insight and some help from my friend, Ellis Starr, who joins me on the program now. He is the Uber capper. He's always looking for some prices out there. Ellis, happy opening day. Thanks for joining me here on Keeneland at Home. Happy opening day, Christine, and happy opening day to all the fans. I am uber excited about Keeneland's meat being squeezed into these five days with all the steaks we know and love and some great racing. 
fast and furious, and that's how we are going to attack this as far as the handicapping. So I want to jump right to race number five, Ellis, because I know you have a couple very interesting horses in here. Maiden Special Weight Company, kind of a tricky seven for a long distance. Let's start first with the number four, Savvy, gelded son of Flashback. He's kind of been knocking at the door. Could he get the job done today? I think so, Christina. Horses are athletes, and they work their way into form lots of times. And what's interesting is the pattern. Savvy debuted last October, ran fourth in his first race, and then a month later in November, he ran really big and only got beat three-quarters of a length. Took some time off, came back in June. So off a long layoff, came back and ran third. On the same pattern from last fall, I think he can run well enough to win here second off the layoff. And I know you actually have a price in this race as well that you like. I think Savvy's going to take some money, but Hoof Prince to the outside is 20 to 1. In your research, what did you dig up to give him a shot today? Well, I think everybody that handicaps the races should look for races that are similar. And Hoof Prince ran on dirt in his debut in May, and he didn't run badly at all. He ran fifth, but he was only beaten three lengths in a 12-horse field. And then they tried him on grass last time out a month later, uh, and he ran third early and pressed a hot pace and then tired to 10th. Well, he's moving back to dirt. That's the first plus. The second plus is he's been working very well on the dirt at Churchill Downs in preparation. And the third thing, which is really interesting, is there are some races that are productive. We don't know why. We call them key races. And those are races from which horses that sometimes who ran further back in the race come back to run well. In this race that Hoof Prince ran in uh, on June 14th, most of the horses have not run back yet, but three of them did. Two of them won, and one of them ran second. The fifth-place finisher and the seventh-place finisher both came back to win. We have no idea why. Their running lines look just like his, but something about the race was strong, and that makes me think Hook Prince could outrun his high odds here. Those key races, they can definitely help you find a price. Ellis, I mentioned that this distance is seven furlongs, and that can be tricky. There are two horses with some speed in here that I find interesting, and I know you do as well. Dark Web, the number one, and Fugitive, the 11. Can either of them carry that speed, the full seven furlongs? I don't know if they could win, Christina, but I'm definitely using them in exactas because those horses have been around a lot. Dark Web has been second or third in his last four races. And Fugitive was third in his last race, and they should be up close from start to finish. In this big field with no heavy favorite, this is an opportunity here for an exacta. So you take a couple other horses with the two we just mentioned and put them together in an exacta box. A box you win by horses finishing first and second. You can bet more than two. In this case, we have four horses in an exacta box. That's 12 combinations for first and second in any order. At the $1 minimum, it's a $12 bet, and it's an opportunity to make four or five times your money on that bet. Absolutely, especially if Hoof Prince uh, can finish first or second there. You are going home with some big money today. Ellis, let's skip ahead to race number eight. This is a condition allowance event. Very intriguing. Uh, interesting couple of horses from the Wesley Ward barn. And I want to start first with the number two, Maven. We're competing five and a half furlongs uh, scheduled for the turf course. Maven is a son of American Pharaoh. And he was very impressive to begin his career back in April of last year. But he's off a long layoff today. What do you expect from Maven? Well, again, using the kind of the representative race theory, he's been off for a long time, and the race that led to the layoff, I'm going to ignore. He won first time out, and then he won second time out two months later. That Both those wins were wire to wire, including that race in France, which was the stakes, and he's got a lot of speed. He's been training on the turf very nicely for Ward, who is well known with these kinds of comebackers. He's won 25% of the time using my stats raceland statistic, over 180 starts off six-month layoffs. And he's using a jockey named Gerardo Corrales, who he used on the Kentucky circuit, but a lot of fans may not be familiar with Corrales. Ward and Corrales team up a lot here. They're 18 for 40 in the last year, 45%. So I think Maven's got a good shot to get out front and go all the way. The other horse from Wesley Ward's barn is the Philly Ellis, and she's also off the layoff. Cambria is the number five for Stone Street Stables. They're going to take the blinkers off her today. Can she beat these boys out there? Well, she already beat the boys once, Christina, so I think it is yes. And it gives Ward a one-two punch. Cambria comes from way back, at least mid-pack. She won her first three races, so she can fire fresh. She's been off since November. And then she won the Kentucky Downs Juvenile Turf Sprint last summer against the males. So there's no problem here. Again, it gives Ward a really good one-two punch. I think Cambria has a serious chance here. Last horse I want to ask you about is the number nine race driver runs second off the layoff. So has the recency edge over those few horses, but stats racelands tells us we saw a little bit of a troubled trip out of that last race. What else did you find with regard to race driver? 
Well, you're right. The first, the trouble trip, he broke, got bumped a little bit and was 10th. So he didn't get the early position he had before that. In his turf debut, in his race before that, he was in sixth position early and rallied to win. And last time out, again, rallying 10th to fourth. But that ended up being another race that was productive. The second place finisher came back to win the stakes at New York. And so Race Driver has a nice shot, particularly if someone takes on Maven early. That gives Cambria and Race Driver both a chance to be making up a lot of ground late in the race. All right, Alice, before I let you go, I'm going to put you on the spot. If I had to ask you for one more horse throughout the card today, who do you find the most intriguing? Well, there's an interesting horse in the sixth race, Christian, named Cavalry Charge. And there's a cliche here, which is a grass race, Cavalry Charge. He tried turf for the first time in his eighth career start, and he took the turf like a duck takes to water. He won easily in that race. Julian Le Peru was up for the first time and rides him back. And Cavalry Charge was flattered when the third horse came back to win. He fits perfectly. If you think of racing class as a ladder, a horse that breaks its maiden, is the first level and this next level is the first allowance condition which is what this is and he fits perfectly he's 10 to 1 on the morning line and offers some value ellis thank you so much as always wonderful insight enjoy the rest of your opening day and promise me that you'll come back again tomorrow to give us some more of those prices on keeneland at home i'm looking forward to it and good luck to everybody on opening day at keeneland Ellis Starr, thank you so much. As always, you can check his Twitter account for some other insight and analysis. He always has some great prices for you out there. So keep up with his handicapping and we will bring him back each and every day as we continue on here with Keeneland at Home presented by Central Bank. All right, if that was a little bit much, if that felt like a lot of in-depth handicapping for you, let's take a step back. If you are new to horse racing, new to reading the racing form, and new to trying to figure out how you want to invest your money, we want to introduce you to handicapping with a new segment that we have called Bedology. It's essentially Handicapping 101. Today, we are going to teach you about the win, place, and show wager. Take a look. Three words, win, place, and show. These are the most fundamental and easiest bets to place in horse racing. Welcome to Lessons in Betology. Today you'll learn about the basics of win, place, and show. Let's take it from the top. A win bet is exactly what it sounds like. When you place a win bet on a horse, you're betting that horse will come in first place. Simple as that. When you bet a horse to place, you're betting that horse will come in either first or second place. You'll cash the ticket either way, so this is an easier bet to hit, but it pays out slightly less than a straight win bet. And when you bet the horse will show, it's the same principle, but you're betting that horse will come in first, second, or third place. This is the easiest of the three to hit, but you guessed it, a show bet pays less than a win or a place bet. Here's a tip. If you feel really good about one horse, you can place an across the board bet. This essentially is a shorthand way of placing a combined win, place, and show bet on the same horse all at once. If the horse wins, you collect on all three bets. If it places, you collect on two bets. And if it shows, you collect on one bet. So there you have it. Those are the basics of win, place, and show. Try these bets yourself. Download Keeneland Select, the mobile betting app that lets you bet from anywhere on races at Keeneland and other tracks around the world. Signing up is free and easy at KeenelandSelect.com. Next time on Lessons in Betology, we'll build on these basics by covering exotic wagers, exactas, trifectas, and superfectas. See you then. Rachel, thank you so much for that. And again, Ellis gave you that price horse today, Hoof Prince. He would be a perfect horse to use for the win, place, and show to get some money back. If he finishes first, second, or third, you could be rewarded pretty handsomely, especially if he goes off at anywhere near that 20 to 1 morning line. I have a very special interview that I want to share with you now. Today marks the day of the launch of the 2020 Thoroughbred Industry Employee Awards. This is the day where you can nominate a deserving candidate to go home with one of these very prestigious awards as well as a cash prize if you feel that they are deserving. A short time ago, I had a chance to speak with Katie LaMonica. She is the Charities Director 
for Godolphin USA. Here she is to tell us all about the TIEA Awards. Well, the process was actually started by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed. He, um, the whole thing was his idea. The, so the story goes, um, 15 years ago, he was walking around one of the yards in England and um, asked if any of his staff or any of the people that work in the thoroughbred industry ever get recognized. And um, so the neck, so the industry awards sort of came to light. Um, the first uh, awards happened in England in 2005. Um, so they've been going quite a long time in England. Um, but he was really actually the initial inspiration behind the awards. Um, we brought the program to America five years ago. This is a national awards recognition, recognition program for anyone who works in the thoroughbred industry, farm, racetrack, any capacity. Um, it is incredibly important to recognize these people that are just the backbone of our industry, um, that work, you know, seven days a week, tough conditions, um, and do everything that they do for our horses and our sport. So this is so important to um, that everybody participates in and recognizes their staff and understands how important it is and how good it feels for someone to, you know, take notice of them and nominate them to this award. Um, we don't do this alone. Goodolphin is the sponsor of it, but we have wonderful partners on this. Uh, the Jockey Club, the Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association, the Breeders' Cup, and the National HBPA are our partners on this awards process and are um, vital to its success as well. the judges and kind of walked everybody through this process what are the emotions that you have seen over the years in terms of what this brings out in everybody the um, the emotions are so strong the stories are so amazing um, the, the first thing that I love is the emotion that comes out when someone finds out number one that they've been nominated um, but when they become, if they become a finalist, they are absolutely just blown away and so excited that um, that someone thought enough of them to nominate them, and the judges put them through and put them as a finalist. So there's always a lot of emotion that comes there. And then uh, when we get into the second phase of the judging, it, those are in-person interviews, and um, the judges always come out of that room at the end of the day, saying that they are just so inspired um, all the stories you know all the people that they've met and listened to that it's so difficult to um, to pick a winner because they're, they're all winners um, but they really are just so enthusiastic about the program and what it means so um, and then when we actually get to the award ceremony um, and uh, people are up there and they realize they've won. It's, I, it's more sometimes their families are more excited for them because um, they love what they do and they say, you know, I don't, do, I, don't, I don't do what I do to get an award. I just do what I do because I love working with the horses. And so, but everybody knows their sacrifice and why they're there. So it's very special. Well, I can see just you sort of light up when I ask that last question because I know how much it means and so for everybody out there anyone can nominate we want to remind you of that not just the boss if you have you know a contemporary that you think deserves an award you can nominate that person tiea.org is the website at july 8th the nominations open august the 14th they close katie thank you so much for taking some time to share this with us today because your mission in this is very much the mission of i am horse racing we want to share the stories and we want to appreciate everybody who dedicates themselves to the horse Katie, thank you so much for taking the time to share that with us today. This is certainly the year to nominate. You know, many of us have been able to come home and work safely from home, but these horsemen and women, they have been dedicated to our horses, the horses that bring us the sport we know and love each and every day. So if you know someone that is deserving, please head to TIEA.org and nominate. The process is very simple.
Okay, before we finish things up here on Keeneland at Home, presented by Central Bank, I want to have a little bit of fun. You will certainly recognize this voice. Track announcer Kurt Becker, he is not only accurate and wonderful during the races each and every day and also in the sales and auction ring, but he has one of the sharpest wits of anybody I know. We've asked a few of you to send in some of your favorite home videos, and I can promise you Kurt Becker's call makes them that much funnier. Our submissions today come from Barbara Banke of Stone Street Farm and Yvonne. Okay, guys, this is not proving a thing. Have you thought about having a race? Here you go. All right, you've got the idea. Let's do classic distance, European style, clockwise. They're off. Around the clubhouse turn they go. These three begin the long journey up the back stretch here. Now down the side of the course. The final bend for home. Here's the finish. What a conclusion here this afternoon. Terrific race. And we're right back where we started. We haven't settled a thing. Getting ready here this afternoon. This is the showdown we've all been waiting for. Already, Cowboy and Tipton are nose to nose. They haven't even begun the race yet. They move into line. And they are off. Tipton is quickest into stride. Would have lost money on that one. Cowboy really riding herd here. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Nobody move until Tipton figures out what's going on. Oh, there goes Cowboy. We hope you've enjoyed the program today. Do remember, you can head online or on television to watch all of the racing action of this exciting five days of the summer meet from Keeneland. Again, those stakes races that you are used to, all 10 of them packed into five days, and it's certainly going to be a wonderful and world-class experience. We hope you've enjoyed the program. We want to thank our very generous sponsors for making this possible today, including Switcher Studio. Enjoy the races this afternoon for the entire Keeneland at Home team presented by Central Bank. I'm your host, Christina Blacker, and we will see you back here again tomorrow. Good luck at the races.